Hello. Welcome back to the Conscious Code series on the on the Embody Me podcast. My name is Crystal Renee, and I'm here to guide you through the 64 archetypes of the human design gates as the sun transits into each gate every six days. Okay, so we are in gate 11. And this is what I like to refer to as the harmonious imagination. So in human design, it's called the gate of ideas or peace or the gate of harmony. It's different names. This is in the Ajna center, moving towards the throat through the channel of curiosity linked to gate 56. And in the gene keys, it's called the light of Eden. Mm. This is in the tropical sign of Sagittarius. And it also moves into the Vedic sign of Sagittarius, but only the first day is in the Vedic sign of Scorpio. So it's kind of on the cusp in Vedic astrology. In I Ching, it's referred to as Unio Mystica of heaven and earth, or also peace. So we're already getting peaceful vibes from gate 11. So the overall energy is centered around the power of imagination visualization and contemplation. It's all in your Ajna, your third eye chakra. Um, and people with this gate activated have a rich inner world of ideas and images, and they revel in pondering life's greatest questions without feeling pressured to find immediate answers. And they possess the ability to sort and piece together various concepts to form a bigger picture or story. In the shadow, in the gene keys. This gate is called obscurity, which represents a state of feeling unseen, unheard, or misunderstood. And it can manifest as a tendency to withdraw, hide your true self, no, hide your true self, or play small to avoid standing out. So the repressive nature of this shadow is fantasizing which is a tendency to retreat into fantasy or unrealistic ideals. And it may involve indulging in daydreaming, escapism, or creating elaborate fantasies as a means to avoid or disengage from reality. So this repressive behavior can hinder your ability to take practical action and manifest your ideas in the physical world because you're stuck in la la land, right? And the reactive nature is deluded, which is the tendency to be caught up in delusions or illusions. And it may involve distorting or misinterpreting reality, holding on to false beliefs, or being easily influenced by external influences or deceptive narratives. And this reactive behavior can cloud your judgment and lead to misguided actions or decisions. So in the repressive nature, you're all fantasy in your mind and then the reactive nature you're deluded listening like just believing everything that's going on outside of you in the shadow you can also be have an overactive imagination a fear of darkness uh you could feel burnout from too many ideas idea overload um you lack groundedness you're not grounded in your shadow you have an unrealistic idealism and you project your inner fantasy into your real world, um, resisting the dark and needing, you know, and, and craving structure. But in the gift, which is idealism, you're more of a visionary. You have an idealistic nature. And as you embody this gift, you possess a deep sense of purpose and a vision for a better world. So let's talk about the gift in comparison to the shadow. You possess the gift of inner contemplation through visualization. So your mind is rich with imaginative ideas and images that allow you to ponder life's greatest questions without the pressure of finding immediate answers. You have a creative imagination and your mind is like an idea factory, constantly generating new and innovative concepts. You have a stimulation for reflection where you are, you have these ideas and then you reflect on them from a realistic lens. 
and you can foresee almost like the peace and harmony that could exist in the world. You have a big picture perspective and you align yourself with the interests of the collective of humanity. You, you crave change for the better. Um, and you are, you, you use imagination as a tool for manifestation and you know how to balance instead of being afraid of the dark, you know how to balance the light and the dark. Like you're super spiritual. It's almost like you're moving away from the dark and towards the light. And in your gift, you know how to balance the two in your shadow. You're afraid of the dark, but in your gift, you're no longer afraid and you know how to utilize the darkness. And not only that, but you envision a peaceful world and you know that it's possible. You're not deluded or in la la land in your gift. You're, you actually know, you see the visions and you know that they are possible. And in the city, you are light. Light is the city of this specific gene key or gate. And I like how he, how Richard Rudd states it. It's uprooting the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The tree of knowledge, the third eye chakra, the Ajna center, knowing the inner knowing and then the tree of knowledge of good and evil balancing the darkness with the light so in the shadow you're afraid of the darkness in the city you know you're the light there's no re reason to be afraid of the darkness it's a state of profound illumination where your inner light shines brightly and effortlessly there's no need to be afraid of darkness because there is no darkness that exists in the light and you are the light so you go from feeling unseen and unheard and misunderstood in your shadow, completely delusional, right? <laughs> I love how the Delulu is going on around right now because um, I think we all should start tapping into that ass, that side of us. Um, and then you go, you move into magical realism, which is your gift where you're a visionary and you, you can see a, a better world. You have a vision for a better world. And then in your highest state of frequency, which is pure light, you are the light, you see the light, you know the light is possible. And that's why you carry this gift of idealism. So here are some contemplative questions you can ask yourself if you have this gate defined. When I think about the possibility of my truth being wrong, what feelings come up for me? It's a good way to navigate your idealism, right? What do I do with inspiration when I receive it? And in what areas of my life do I feel unseen or misunderstood? Here are some tips to help you further embrace the shadow of obscurity and embody the gift of idealism. The first one is to embrace your uniqueness and recognize that your perspectives and gifts are valuable. Embrace your individuality and and trust in the power of your vision to make a positive impact in the world. Stay grounded and stay practical. So while idealism fuels your vision, it's important to balance it with a grounded understanding of the practicalities of implementation. Take practical steps to manifest your ideas and do it in tangible ways, considering the resources and the limitations of the present moment. And of course, practice discernment and adaptability in your idealism. So while holding on to your ideals, remain open to feedback, new perspectives, and the evolving nature of life. Embrace discernment to refine and adjust your vision so that you can decipher what is fantasy and what is could be reality. Knowing, just hold on to the knowing that things, all things are possible. Um, hold on to your vision, especially if you keep having a vision. It is yours to have, um, but it's important to take those practical steps to bring it into manifestation and allowing it to align with the greater good and the changing dynamics of the world. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for being here with me. And I'll see you again when the sun transits into the next human design gate.